Hello there and welcome to this video on ionic compounds and the main properties of them. So the first property we're going to have a look at is the melting point. And the key thing to know is that all ionic compounds have high melting points and boiling points. Now this is due to the fact that there is a strong force of attraction between the positive cations and the negative anions. Now this means that lots of energy is needed to break those strong forces of attraction, which is the reason they have high melting points and boiling points. The second main property we want to have a look at is whether they conduct electricity or not. And there are two things you need to look at here, and that's whether they conduct when they're a solid or whether they conduct when they're a liquid. When we talk about liquid, we talk about whether they are dissolved in solution or melted. So one of the key things when talking about whether ionic compounds can conduct or not is whether the ions are free to move or not. Now we've already said that there's a strong force of attraction in ionic compounds and that means that the ions when it's a solid are not free to move. But when you heat it up those ions get in more energy and they become dissociated which means that they become free to move. So in summary then ionic compounds do not conduct when they are solid but they do conduct when they are liquid or molten because the ions become free to move. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of questions. So question one says, explain the ability of molten sodium chloride and solid sodium chloride to conduct electricity. That is worth four marks. So think through whether they can conduct or not and then the explanation as to why. Question two says, explain why sodium chloride will not melt when heated with the Munson burner. So what you need to do there is state the property that suggests why it will not melt and then go into the explanation for it. So pause the video now, have a go, and we'll see how you've done in a minute. Okay, let's have a look then. So question one, explain the ability of molten sodium chloride and solid sodium chloride to conduct electricity. What you need to do first of all is turn around and say whether they do or do not conduct. So we'll start off with solid sodium chloride. So you get one mark for saying it will not conduct when a solid. And then you need to go into the explanation. So why not? There's a strong force of attraction between the ions. You can say a strong force of attraction between the cations and anions, that will be equally fine. And the reason that it can't conduct is that the ions are therefore not free to move. If we move on to the molten sodium chloride then, so that's where it's been melted, it will conduct when molten, and then the explanation for that is the ions are free to move. So you've got two marks for just saying it won't conduct when solid and will conduct when liquid, but you need the explanation to get up to four marks. And then question two, explain why sodium chloride will not melt when heated with a Bunsen burner. You've got three things that you need to talk about here. So the first one is saying again there's a strong force of attraction between the ions or between the cations and anions. Number two, saying lots of energy is needed to break the bonds. And then that all gives it the property of having a high melting point, which is the one that people miss more often than not. Okay, that's hopefully helped you with this video. We'll move on to the review question which is lithium chloride is an ionic compound. Describe and explain the properties of lithium chloride, which is a six marker, which brings together everything we've covered in this video. And that ends this video. Hi guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click the subscribe button down below and visit the website mrbarnstc.com for more.